Welcome everybody to another episode of Ryan Spoils the Movies. I'm Ryan West. And I'm getting my movie spoiled, Ryan Thomason. And that is said Ryan. And tonight Ryan is going to spoil a movie that I have seen but he is not. And Ant-Man and the Wasp, the latest uh, latest Phase 17 movie from Marvel. I don't know, yeah. what phase are we on? Phase 35. Phase 35 movie from Marvel. Uh, if you're not familiar with this segment, it's our second episode, so I guess maybe some people aren't. Uh, Ryan does not get out very often to see movies. I go out a lot to see the movies, and so I was tired of sitting around not being able to review these. And instead, I decided that Ryan was going to suffer... And uh, I'm going to review the movie, the first part of this. I'm going to give a spoiler-free review of a quick review of the movie. And at the very end, because Ryan has not seen the movie, he is going to face the ultimate punishment. And he's going to be forced to ask me three questions cool. about the movie that spoils it for Ryan. Hence, Ryan spoils the movies yes. for himself. And, and I sometimes I just don't care. So <laughs> Which if, could be tonight. Let's just... We're going to find out together. But like I said, the first part is going to be spoiler free. So if you have not seen the movie, feel free to, to tune in for the first half of this and then come back later. But uh, we are going to be talking spoilers at the end of this. So you have been warned. Uh, so Amy and the Wasp is the 37th entry into Marvel. I've on, I have on. I don't even, I think we're on like Marvel movie like 20 at this point. But it's some ungodly number. It is the follow up to Ant-Man and Civil War and Avengers 4. And, and War Part 5. And I don't even know what else. Uh, <laughs> if it, it takes place two years after the event of the original Ant-Man. It's Like I said, it tells the follow-up of what happened to, to Scott Lang after the, uh, the events of Civil War. Um, and, let's see, spoiler free. I can't spoil it, so I'm going to say here. Uh, he's under house arrest. That happens in the early parts. It's hard to yeah. not spoil anything because literally the trailers have spoiled this entire movie. I'm not even going to lie. Everything you've seen in the trailers yeah. is pretty much all the best parts of this movie. There's there's an Ant-Man. There's a Wasp. The Wasp gets the, her costume. She helps Ant-Man. They fly around. They want to save her mother. There's this like ghost character that phases through things. All the people you like are back. They shrink. They grow. They grow really big. And then they shrink Does again. Does she grow too? What? Is this a, is this a spoiler? Does she grow? Uh, like bigger? No, she never grows. She never grows in the comics. Only Ant-Man can turn into Giant Man. Okay. But you've already seen it in like Civil War and in the trailers. So, yeah. uh, you know, I mean the movie's pretty straightforward. This movie is a movie about them saving the Wasp Mom. The original Ant-Man and the Wasp want to save the original Wasp. So there's two Wasps and two Ant-Mans yeah. and a ghost. And so wasn't the original Goliath. Wasp, she got trapped into the the super shrink zone. Yeah, You know, I know this something. is a real crappy review, but I'll be honest. Like, the movie, I, I enjoyed this movie, but it's not because of the story. The story is so basic. I mean, it just it, it just picks up where the last one left off. And just follows through with the last one. In the last movie, they tell the story about how Janet uh, Janet Van Dyne was lost in 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 the in the quantum zone, and that she'd never be recovered. But then at the end, they thought maybe they could. And so this whole movie's about Hank Hank Pym and and his daughter Hope and Scott Lang trying to rescue their mother, Hope's mother, not not Scott Lang's mother. Da -da, da -da, we don't know anything about Scott Lang's mother. Uh, she's probably still alive. I don't know. But uh, it's got all the things you liked about the first one. It's got the giant ants. It's got Scott Lang's adorable daughter. It's got Michael Pena and the whole, like, robbery crew. And it's got him telling the stories where, like, he's like, so, I, like I said, yo, what's up? And they were like, what's up? And it, like, shows what happens. You get more yeah. of that. I don't How know. How many times did they do that, though? Did they overdo it? No, they did it just the right amount. They did it, like, a couple times. But they did just the oh. right amount of times. I mean, here's the thing. The movie's a fun movie. I would watch this cast literally reenact Hamlet because they're just so much fun together and they do a great job. But the story is really not strong and the action beats, honestly, all the great action sequences you see in the trailers. Um, you know, the, 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 the Pez dispenser growing large and being thrown. You think, oh, we're going to get a lot of that. No, you don't. Pretty much you get everything you see in the trailer 
And that, I mean, they're like longer sequences, but everything is in the trailer in this movie, which was really disappointing. Um, in the first movie, in the original Ant-Man movie, you had you had uh, a great se- a sequence with Thomas the Train, where there was a whole train, Thomas Train, small set moving, yeah. and Yellow Jacket and, and Ant-Man are fighting, and it seems so epic, and then it zooms out, and it's like, and it zooms back in, but it's all epic. It's kind of like jumping around on the train set. You could really tell the first script was done by uh, by a screenwriter and Edgar Wright who was really talented. And this one's not bad. I don't want to I don't want to seem like I just don't like this movie. It's just not nearly as good of a movie as the original Ant Man was. Um, and I, I really enjoyed the first Ant Man. That being said, it's a ton of fun. This is much more of a Marvel movie than it is an Ant Man movie, if that makes sense. Like they spent a significant amount of time tying it into Civil War, and then you know the very end of this movie they set up events for Avengers Infinity War so, or uh, 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 Avengers uh, 4 but um, mm-hmm. you know Ghost is not nearly as good of a villain as Yellow Jacket and I I don't know I had a good time with this I enjoyed it it's it's definitely Doctor Strange level where you watch it once and be like eh, whatever I don't care yeah so well, was, was Ghost more like I can't remember what her character is <laughs> She well, she she has Space some. Stuff. All right, well, tell you what, this we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna say that's the end of the my review. I'm gonna say it's a good movie. Okay. I'd give it a solid seven out of ten. Um, it's not great, but it's not bad at all. I mean, if you enjoy Marvel, you're gonna go see this. You're gonna have a couple hours. You're gonna have fun. Um, you're gonna laugh. It's not a bad movie by any means. It's just not. It's disappointing because all the great things are revealed in the trailers. And it just doesn't have whatever that first one really had, right? So, yeah. um, so it's, like I said, 7 out of 10, not a bad score, just not a great one. Uh, but definitely I would recommend checking it out, seeing it in the theater. They're always, they're great on the big screen. But, all right, so now we're going to kind of dive into the spoilers. Ryan's going to get the chance to ask three questions. And if he wants to ask, ask more, go right ahead. So, Ryan, now that you've heard my review, what is your first question about Ant-Man and the Wasp? Explain Ghost a little more. Um, so Ghost is, this is part of my problem with Ghost. Like, she's a good character to an extent. They make her the main villain, but she's really a sympathetic character. So she's one of these characters that she, she, she got, she was in an accident as a child from her father who was messing with Hank Pym's technology and she absorbed all this quantum energy. So it allows her to constantly be phasing in and out, but it hurts her. She can't control it. S.H.I.E.L.D. offered to help her, but used her as an assassin and so she is not really evil she's just trying to find a way to make the pain stop and she's slowly dying Mm -hmm. so that's what she does now i will say her fight sequences are great like when they're trying to fight her and they're punching right through her and she's just phasing through walls it's really cool that is very cool visually it's a cool thing but she's just not a great villain for this movie They, they want you to like her a lot more but you don't have any other real strong villains to piggyback off of right so yeah Cause like, uh, so like in the winter soldier and here's what I mean by that. So in the winter soldier, the winter soldier was a great villain until you find out that he's Bucky and he becomes sympathetic. So you start rooting for the winter soldier to be good, but it works because you had Robert Redford, who is a fantastic villain still there that you can hate this movie. Once you get past the wasps, there's really nobody else there to really hate mm-hmm. or uh, the ghost. There's really nobody else to root against. So, um, my second spoiler is uh, where the, the hell was Ant-Man during the Infinity War? He was under house arrest at his house for two years. Seriously? So that's how they did it? That's what they did. House arrest or he was going to prison. That was the deal he worked out from the Sokovia Accords. <laughs> okay. Lame. <laughs> uh, so I I know I've, I've heard of Ant-Man's in the poster, so I'm guessing the Wasp got... Dusted. So, is that your third and final question? It's not my final question. Should I save that for my final question? Well, I don't know. Well, you get one more question, so you ask your question. We got to get out of here. I got lots of questions. It's late. Man. All right, I'll give you I a bonus to, question. No. You get two questions. So, you get what's your third question? <laughs> okay, my third question will be, um, what was the um, uh, what's the, the the guy that tells the stories? Michael Pena? Yeah, what was what was the first one? His first story? Yeah, was it good? What was the best one? 
So he gets, so they all kind of run into one. So he does multiple stories, but in one setting. So he gets oh, doused okay. with true serum. And so he starts talking about like, I don't remember what it was. God, what was it now? It was always oh, the first time he met, he met Ant-Man in prison. It's, it's all funny. Uh-huh. He's got like a big, like, he's got like a big Jerry curl. It's pretty funny. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, and I guess my, my final question will be, uh, who gets, who gets dusted? Do you want to know? And, that's an open, care. that's a pretty open question. You want to know? It's going to, is it going to ruin the next movie? No. Is it going to ruin all right, the next movie? So Ant-Man, sp- all right, this is a big spoiler. So if you guys don't want to know anything, this is the post credit scene. In the post credit scene, Ant-Man jumps into the quantum realm to uh to to basically get some energy because they're trying to heal ghosts and so while he's in there they tell him watch out don't get sucked into a time vortex he says no problem and then he goes hello hello because they rescue matt michelle pfeiffer so it's hank pym the old wasp and the new wasp all standing in the real world talking to ant-man in the quantum realm and then he's like hello and nobody answers and it phases out and there's three piles of dust the so, end. all so he's in the quantum realm. He's in the quantum realm, and Ant Man, Wasp, and other Wasps all turn to dust. Oh, so they find her mom then, and then she goes to dust. Yeah, so oh okay, there you go. Oh, but they set up for Avengers form because the the time vortex because we've seen shots of Ant Man in different times in the Avengers movies, so. Clearly, he gets sucked into the time vortex and tries to stop whatever is going to happen in the next movie. Mm. And so maybe, so he, so then, and this ties into the next Avengers movie. Yeah. So the next movie we get is uh, we get Captain Marvel in I think March, and then we get yeah. Avengers four in probably May or June. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> Very interesting. All right, Ryan. That's it. That's it. That's what we got for Ryan Spoils Moves. Ryan really spoiled the movie for himself tonight, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> he seemed to yeah. not really care as much. In fact, I feel kind of weird that he's really getting, starting to get into this. But uh, anyway, do you have any other questions before we get out of here? No. I, I think I've done enough. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, go see some movies so I don't have to spoil them for you. And uh, stay hey. awesome. <laughs> yeah, and stay nerdy. <laughs>